everybody, it's time to LOL. Listen out loud, that is. It's time for Anime Jam Session with DJ Ranma S, Mako-chan, and Ari Rockefeller. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Anime Jam Session, episode number 587. We are that podcast that talks about anime, games, conventions, geek stuff, and everything in between. I'm DJ Ranma S. I'm Ari Rockefeller. And I am Mako-chan. And how is everybody doing tonight? I'd say better than last week, but that's a lie. Huh? I'm doing I'm very sleepy, so, you know. All right, so... bad for a different reason. All right, well, before we continue, uh, Mako, can you, come, can you come down just a scotch? And Ari, can you come up some? All right, uh, one sec. How is that? A little bit more. How's that? Perfect. 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 Okay, because when I was sitting here before, you couldn't hear me. Stranger things have happened. Look, I, I look How's this? I, that's perfect. All I know is when I did a Windows update, nobody could hear me. And I had to turn up the gain on the heads on the on the mixer, and everyone's like, oh, that's great. Ran another update. And it was too damn loud, so I, I don't even know anymore, so... Our computers are haunted. That's the only explanation. Yeah, techni- yeah, technical ghosts here and there. All I know is, is that when I go back and edit the podcast, there is, like, humming in the background, and luckily there is a plug-in in Audition where I can just drop it in, and no one's the wiser. Cool. And that's why I'm glad I use these headphones, you know, to, you know, to edit audio, because... Honestly, I would not have heard it through the normal speakers. So, anywho, <laughs> and as for myself, I'm hanging in there. But let's go ahead and, and get this party started tonight, shall we? We are we are live tonight, week of May second, two thousand twenty-three. Jesus Christ, we're almost at the halfway mark for the year. It just doesn't seem yeah, like it. Not really, really fast. Say what? It's gone really, really fast. Has it? It just feels like it's been dragging, probably because of the weather. I don't know. I am quite surprised that it's already May, so. Yeah, you and me both. Oh, well, you know, hey. I just figured, you know, for May weather, you know, it, the weather would be a, a, at least a little bit warmer, you know? That's what I was thinking. And, and anywho, let's get back and continue on with this. Uh, we are here live Tuesdays from 9 to 10, 30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you can always find us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash anime jam session. We're also proud to be part of the Voice of Geeks Network at vognetwork.com. And you can find them at twitch.tv slash vognetwork. And before we continue, I want to give a quick shout out to our peeps uh dark soccer olr who is playing dead by daylight rob roberts who is playing uh strangers of paradise final fantasy origin uh under the pale a friend of anime jam session he's playing mighty number nine and berry melon awesome co-host of the show is off playing honkai star rail which i think i might end up playing soon we'll see anywho let's kind of get back to the matters at hand here so as we said before, um, Twitch TV slash Vlog Network, uh, they kick things off on Sundays at 8 p.m. with the Bobby Blackwolf Show, followed by Orange Lounge Radio at 9. And we kind of finish it off at Tuesdays with Anime Jam Session. And come hang out in our Discord, vlognetwork.com slash Discord. Every show that's part of the Voice of Geeks Network has their own channel, so come through and hang out and have a good time. So now that we got that out of the way, we're going to go around the room with how was your week, how was your day, Ari. Oh boy. And here we go. Da, 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 well, uh, it was a lot of work related stuff. Uh, this mm. past Friday, I, I made a mistake because, well, the mistake was on taking the overtime at work mm-hmm. and having to get up earlier for it. But it was, uh, what happened that was the big mistake. You see, I managed to get my stupid ass locked out of my own apartment. Oof. Like, I, you know, got dressed for work, you know, pulled the door closed, you know, like, 
felt around in my pockets like, wait, shit, where's my wallet? I'm like, where are my keys? And then I looked around, I'm like, oh, god damn it. And yep, that was it. I uh, locked myself out of my apartment. I mean, I had my phone on me, thankfully. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was actually able to try and call somebody to yeah. uh, get me to help me out. Right. But the thing is, when I tried to uh, call various locksmiths in my area, mm -hmm. they are either weren't in range, you know, didn't have anyone available to come out there that time of day, or didn't open until several hours later, or had number phone numbers that were not in act in service. Got you. Okay. And I'm just like, God damn it. So after like, so after a while, I just decided screw it. Maybe, maybe maintenance will help. And I mm -hmm. called them up because it was beyond, because it was you know before their normal business hours. Like if this is a maintenance emergency, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Well, technically, and, uh, it is an emergency, you know. Mhm. Mm and that's that's what ended up happening. I uh, I got the maintenance guy to come down, and uh, get me out of the. That get me uh back into my room, well, mm -hmm. apartment, and it only cost me about fifty bucks, which was good because some of the estimates for some of the locksmiths I was looking up started at about twice that much. Well, which is understandable because they're twenty four hours and they're just trying to you know it's you know it's showing up at it's like an emergency thing. It's like when I used to work at a uh, Geek Squad. And we had a thing. If if there was an emergency with your computer and you needed it done now, you had to pay double, which means you get jumped to the front of the line. But it was still, it was not fun having to wait. I was about an hour and a half late for work, and thankfully, you know the you know the my uh the supervisor I was working alongside was a uh, understand understanding with what happened but right oh boy was it embarrassing i mean come on it, it happens how was that how was that embarrassing it's well, not you gotta understand ari shit happens that's it yeah maybe but it's it still feels like i shouldn't have like that shouldn't have happened to me like i there's a i should be smarter than that i think that's all of us i mean like look Monday, I overslept by an hour, okay? And that's normally not like me, regardless of how I carry myself. And I'm rushing to get out the door so I can get to work, get, try to at least salvage, you know, that time, you know? It happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like I got, you know, shouted down or anything like that. But uh, after that, it's just... You know, I managed to have Sunday off because that was the end of my split week. Mm -hmm. And, well, I was, I just, uh, I've been on a normal nine to five for, like, starting yesterday for the rest of the week. So there's a, so that's going a little better for me. Well, that's good. Marco, how so, was yeah, that's you? how things are happening. That's good. At least things are, are, are looking up. That, and that's all that really matters. Marco, how was your week? How was your day? Um, it rained a lot. You think? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, basically, working outside of the house, we couldn't do. We couldn't do painting because it was too wet outside, meaning that it wouldn't dry. Um, so I instead sat and I finished Persona Five. Of course you did, because you are a glutton for punishment. Yeah, well, I I knew I didn't have much left, so I decided that I would just sit and finish that. So now I get to uh, continue on with my Hades play. Hmm. I will say, before I get into Castle Point, there were a lot of Persona 5 cosplays. I would say that had to be the number two cosplay at this con, followed by uh, Demon Slayer, but... I would assume the resurgence of P5 cosplays due to the re-release of it being on Xbox and Switch. Yeah, That's probably. That's probably exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's all I think it's all okay. It's all good, you know. So basically that's all you did was just play Persona. I that I, I worked a shit ton. Mm -hmm. I played Persona and I cuddled with the cats. No, no, I was just checking, you know. I thought you I thought I might have cut you off or something like that. No, no. Okay. I I just I have been mentally trying to prepare for this coming weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just because conventions in May tend to be very uh, youth attracting, I will say. That only means you're going to cosplay Mandy from Grim Adventures and just stare at everybody. Yeah, no, I'm not cosplaying. <laughs> I was going to, and then I'm just like, I don't care enough to. So you're just gonna, you're just, you're just gonna stare at everybody. Yep. All right. At least this, and I don't know what I'll do for uh, CloverCon at the end of the month. You know, you might end up cosplaying for that one because that is our usual favorite. So. Yeah, I usually do something semi-simple. So I'll find something, but. I mean, this one, it, it also is weird that it's at my old school, so I'm just, just going to go and kind of hermit. <laughs> well, it's not like you're going to run into any of your old professors. Uh, no, no, not at all. Um, I would be surprised if most of them are still there. Mm -hmm. But I kind of get but that. I, I trust mm -hmm. me. I understand where you're coming from. Like years ago, my old hometown, the pu their public library had their own mini anime con, and a friend of mine was a guest. And I'm just standing there in surreal disbelief that this is an actual thing. Yeah, it just it it makes me feel old. <sighs> Are you drinking prune juice? Um, no, but that reminds me, I have no idea where my tea is. <laughs> well, maybe you are getting up there. Oh, wait, no, here it is. Oh, it's behind she, me. You found it. She found it. I found it. And meanwhile, okay, Damien that's... pops his head up and stares and goes right back to sleep. No, the cats haven't been in the room with me in a while. Oh, yeah, that's right. They usually don't because of the boys. Mm-hmm. Although I did leave the door open a little bit the other day mm -hmm. while I was cleaning the cage and feeding them and all of that. And the cats just sat there and were very interested in the things making noise in this room. Mm -hmm. And the boys didn't go crazy, so that's that's a plus. I think the Maybe boy getting used to uh, the scent now. That's what I was getting ready to say, yeah. So yeah, fun times. Oh, that's good. All right. So my weekend day is you is work as per normal. And, you know, I got I got to drop this in the chat real quick. So any anywho, work has been at same old, same old. And this weekend I did go to Castle Point and I will be talking about that a little bit later in um in, in, in our show here. And well, we will have a a full detailed review of that con coming up, but but it it was it was it was a good week to, to to say the least. Things are going on at work that's kind of sort of rocked some things, but I'm just getting adjusted to it. So you know, it is what it is. Oh, now that we got that out the way, let's get into some housekeeping. Like it identified and it's going to refresh. No, let's hit the refresh so it tells it what to do. All right. So now we got that out the way. We want to let you know that uh, episodes of Anime Jam Session are available on our YouTube page. Older episodes, past two weeks are there, and current ones. You will find them there on Thursdays at twelve noon. You can find them at YouTube.com/slash Anime Jam Session. Uh, click on playlist and go to uh, podcast vods, and you'll find them all right there. And let's see. Now, nope. Let's try refreshing one more time. There we go. There we go. What else we have here? And as we said, we're talking about conventions. Next up on our sh on our 
2023 uh convention tour we have uh cobra con this weekend actually is this saturday at middlesex community college so come out and have some fun and may 21st is clover con at the uh, 4-h club and what east brunswick is it what clover con yeah is it east brunswick no, CloverCon is in Somerset Bridgewater. Oh, okay. All right. Got you. Got you. And where's the uh, the one for tom- this weekend? Where's that? Middlesex uh, Community College. And it's only 10 bucks to get in, so you can't complain about that. My friend's band will be performing at CloverCon. They have a new lead singer, so that's going to be pretty cool. Kogara-Con, is it? Yeah, Cobra Con, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, I thought you were saying Clover Con twice. I'm like, no, I said Clover Con and Cobra Con, two separate conventions. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, I'm not going crazy. That's good. No, you, you can't go crazy because you already are crazy like the rest of us. <laughs> All right, now that we got that out of the way, we're going to get into our uh, Geek Roundtable. This is where we talk more about the geekier aspects of our lives. So, Ari, how was your Geek Roundtable? Let's have a Greek, Geek Roundtable for you. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I had gotten this a little while ago. I wasn't able to show it because of other things I wanted to show off. But uh, I don't have very few many plushies, but I do have this. Oh. A Flareon. Aww. Best evolution. <laughs> um, th- uh, what does a build a bear have a like evolutions in them, like yes. for sale there? Yes, build a bear. I think all of the evolutions have been released at build a bear now. Cool. Maybe next time I get paid, I'll uh, swing over there and get one one of the nice big ones. Cause I don't know if you can. See, uh... Might have a better chance of ordering it offline because they don't keep each one in stock and some of them have already been retired. So like order from build a Beer's website, in other words. Yeah, I don't, because not every store has each evolution. Mm-hmm. Basically, she's saying it's just easy to order them online as opposed to going from store to store to store. Right. Well, yeah, but, like, I don't even know if Flareon is still available at this point. Eh, I can, uh, like, I can take a shot at it, you know, not the end of the world if I can't find it, but, eh, we'll see. Got nothing to lose. All right, Marco. Yes. Who that? Uh, that would be Vincent. Your other goth boyfriend? Yes, yes. <laughs> Wait, my other goth boyfriend? Who's my first goth boyfriend? Everybody else, I suppose. Yeah, probably. See? See? Uh, Call that one. But yeah, um, I, uh, I I think I might have shown this off before. I don't mm. remember. But uh, yeah, so for Final Fantasy VII, Vincent is my favorite character. So um, as soon as I found that there was a Vincent plushie that was actually legit, I had to have it. <laughs> he has an expression of, let me tell you why that's bullshit. <laughs> Oh yeah, your other boyfriend is the is the crow. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah I'll take that one too. <laughs> of course she will. <laughs> all right. So it's just Vincent just give just giving the giving a stink eye at us all night. Yeah, That's pretty much. That's default expression. Well, yeah, angry, broody. If his if his expression was any more default, he'd be Sasuke from Naruto. Ouch. <laughs> All right, so 
as you all know, I went to Castle Point. Now, one of the things that I do at conventions is I price shop. It doesn't hurt to do that. Now, granted, you'll find something online for 25 bucks, And then, after shipping, it may come out to 40 And you pre-order it. Then when you're at a con, you see the item at the store, I mean, at the booth, but your item's already, you, you can't cancel it. Or, if you're lucky, you'll find it for 25 with free shipping on Amazon. And that's what I do. If it's within a certain price range, if I'm buying multiples, I will buy it. Like, last year I bought three coupons kits. They came, they were a little pricey, but comparing it to Amazon, I didn't mind at the time. And now, I'm just looking a little bit better. So there was a couple of figures that I wanted, and I decided, you know, I'm just going to order it from Otaku Mode. One of the figurines was already sold out from their site, and it was available on Amazon. So I went and got that, plus I got another figurine, and I think... And I got another um pop figure. So now I have a total of 23 pop figures, so... I won't be showing off that one right now, but this one I will be showing off because I was kind of eyeing it for a while, but I was just waiting for a decent price drop. So, yeah, I picked up another Sailor Venus Q Posket. <laughs> this one is Super Sailor Venus. I don't have this one. So now I believe I have Sailor Venus, Super Sailor Venus, Minako, and I believe Princess Venus. I think the Princess Venus one is on pre is on pre order. And the funny thing is, I wasn't even sure I was gonna buy that one because I kept saying that I already have it. But I kept checking my Otaku mode, you know, my purchases I've made. I'm just and I looked. I'm just like, oh no, I don't have this one already. Because sometimes you gotta look at them and just look at the different figure like their poses and be like, oh okay. Got you. That's what it is. So, I have that one. So, and that is um our geek roundtable. And as and even to this, even now behind the scenes, I'm I'm like checking and double checking if I if I didn't already order it. And I bet you, if I go back there and go through my my display stacks and be like, oh shit, I already did buy it. This is going right back to Amazon, so it is what it is. Anywho, now that we got all of that out of the way, yep, Princess uh, Venus is on pre-order, of course. It got delayed yet again, so. <sighs> there was really a, a lot of a lack of Spy Family stuff I saw, but now we got that out the way now we're going to get into our talk of castle point and now to stay under to stay under stay under things i am going to give myself a timer and right, let me go ahead and reset this timer this out get that out I'm giving my. I was originally going to give myself fifteen. Uh, ten. I was originally going to give myself ten minutes to con to cover all of Castle Point, but I'm like. Oh, and if you uh, you if you Google the word timer, you actually has a little timer app up on the uh, on the web page. That's nice, but I already have an app for that. It's what I use for the countdown. So. Oh, okay. That's that's why I have the countdown for that. So. So, I'm thinking, I think 15 minutes would be too much. So I'm like, let me do 12. So I figured, you know what, let me do 15 minutes to cover everything. So, turn everything on. I'm going to put 15 minutes on the clock. Here we go. Even set properly. There we go. All right. So, as you know, 
Castle Point Anime Convention started out as a one-day con at Stevens Institute of Technology, which then evolved into a two-day con on their on their site, on their campus. Which, in turn, it also became, it moved to the Meadowlands Expo Center, and it's a two-day convention there. And, of course, prices go up and so forth. Now, their, their schedule, as in the, the hours of operation, are different from most typical convention anime cons. Generally, with an anime con, things go from 9 a.m. to, like, Friday to 6 p.m. on Sunday. Some conventions, it's, tw- it's evolving in 24 hours. Others, it's like, okay, e- okay, video rooms close at 2, dance close at 2, and we close up shop and start up the next day. Castle Point, they start about, I'd say, around 10 a.m., and they finish around 8 or 9 o'clock. Actually, if I'm not saying it was 9 o'clock that they finished. Now, for me personally, I kind of like that. The benefits of a con ending around 9 or 10 o'clock allows you actual ample time to go grab dinner, actually go meet up and hang out with friends. Yes, you can do that at the convention, but you won't risk meet, missing any panels or anything like that. So... I would say the con the con was good. Could have been better, and we're going to get into that. It also didn't help that it rained over the weekend, and I am so glad that my camera came out unscathed. Now, this time, me and Cynonite, we stayed at a different hotel. We stayed at the, um, used to be called the Embassy Suites, but it's now the Harmony Suites. And it's just a giant cluster F of a hotel. I think we'll be staying at Hyatt Place next year. Now, the only reason why I stayed at that one, because it's literally like a one-minute walk between the hotel and the convention center. Whereas Hyatt Place is like a two-minute walk. But at least if there's bad weather, you can walk underneath the, um, the parking garage and not worry about getting wet, which is which I like. Well, I can't fault them for the bad weather, but they did what they could, you know, to get people in out of the rain. Now, I did check out a couple of panels. One was my friend had a uh, con convention stories panel, which was pretty good. There were some fresh new stories that were told, but this time no videography is was allowed. Now, here's the thing. Generally, when people have a con stories panel it's okay to record it because people are talking about funny things that happen to them silly things but last year things got a little serious there was talk of people there's stories about con goers being creeps and so forth and evidently some people were too weren't too comfortable being recorded of telling their story and so forth so we have our panel up and we may end up pulling it down you know ju- just because which i think is what it there all right that was basically the one and only panel i did on saturday now when you walk in on the right is your dealer's room and it's also your um artist alley this year it wasn't that much of a, it, there was no rush to get in there's normally there's a line to get into to get in there, but there was no line when we got in. Even when we rolled in at around 12 or 12:30, it was still no line. Now the line to go for food outside, yeah, because there were like three. There's about four different um tents out there that you could stand underneath, going between the different food trucks, but there weren't enough, you know, to go all the way up the ramp. So you know, some people got wet. Um, let's see, the game room was sponsored, one of the sponsors for the game room is Snow Phoenix. So there you have Juby, Initial D, uh, Dance Dance Revolution, uh, Taiko Drum Master, the new Love Live game, and 
I think it's called Watcha. It's a circular musical game. I played this at round one. It's quite fun. I played the Love Life game. I enjoyed it. I would like. I wouldn't mind pl- getting another con- like a controller like that to play on the PS4. It's basically the PS4 uh, rhythm game. It's basically the um, the mobile rhythm game. If you remember, it plays the same way. It, it's fun. I enjoyed. That was the only game I was really able to play because there was too many lines for everything else. Now, also inside the game room was their figure expo. Now, this is, I think this is a first. I've never seen a convention talk about, you know, have a display of figurines. So, so staffers brought in their figures and put them on display. And I thought it was really nice. There were a couple of figurines in there that I wanted, but, you know, that reminded me, you know, kind of, Put them on my list and see if I can find them. But overall, I, that was cool. And one section over was the main events. So there were a couple of concerts going on in there, and one of them I didn't record any, but I did pop in and check out Super Thrash Brothers. They were basically a heavy metal video game cover band, and their covers were really good. I really enjoyed their Metroid covers. Then again, it's kind of hard to fuck up a Metroid cover if you're a heavy metal or a rock cover band. So. Overall, Saturday w- was okay at best. It wasn't bad. I did come in, I did wake up Saturday morning going, <sighs> so, because there were some issues I was having with the con itself. But overall, it turned out to be pretty good. I went in with bated breath, met up with some friends, and it turned out to be a good time altogether. Now, let's get into Sunday. Now, when I got up, when well, me and Sidon, when we got up, you know, to check out and so forth, and, and I'll get into the hotel issues in just a bit. The weather was nice. It was a drizzle, and that was it. And then it became pouring rain. Running back and forth to grab my luggage so I could set up the tripod to record and stuff. It's not fun. One of the panels I went to was called 10 Notes or Less. Now, we've all done Name That Tune, right? That's the first thing I thought of when I when I heard that name. Yeah. Basically, I would give props to the person who ran this panel. She did all the musical coverage. Um, the music, the piano covers for everything. So basically, it was it was set up in a Jeopardy style. You pick one, and you had to guess the theme within an under ten notes. So whoever had the lowest number, you know, would get the guess. When you opened it up, when you picked one of the numbers. You got a clue to what the title is or the anime. And then they will play the notes. Basically, it's like you got three points if you guessed the anime or the title and two additional points if you guessed the other one. Like, if you got the anime and you guessed the the name of the theme. Now, what they did was they had two new people going up every time. And everybody in the audience got a ticket. So if you guessed it correctly, you would get extra tickets. And if no one got it, it went to the audience. Because at the end, they were raffling off prizes, which were kind of cool. Now, from a technical standpoint, I wasn't too fond of the fact that she was running the music off of her phone. I mean, if you're doing a Jeopardy-style setup, you could have all that music on your computer and just click double click the file to play the track. Personally, if I w- I if I was going to do my version of it, I wouldn't do 10 notes or less. I would basically do 15 seconds or less of the track and it would either be the opening or the chorus. Simple as that because a lot of us know anime tracks from either the opening or the chorus. Would I do hints? Possibly. I would be like Jeopardy. I would probably put in there, you know, bonus tickets or, you know, free space or something. I, I'm i going to play around with that concept and see what I can come up with. But I thought it was good. It could have been, like I said, it could have been ways to kind of make it a little bit better. But I liked how she ran it. So 
let's get to the masquerade. Now, one of the things I don't like about Castle Plains Masquerade is that it's the last event on a Sunday. For those of you who are taking the bus back and forth, at 7 p.m., the bus back to New York City runs every hour. Most, every t- every two-day convention I've been to, the masquerade is on a Saturday. I understand you want to do it on a Sunday, but it shouldn't be so late. Have the masquerade around 3 or 4, you know? And then around 6, people can start going home. Keep the game room open till 8 and 10, tell everybody to get out. Now, there weren't as many love live um dances uh skits whatever you want to call them but there was a lot of project seikai which is a new one for me because i have not heard of project seikai until zenkai but i will say just about every single performance on the stage were musical skits it was like maybe one like narrative skit i love my idols Love my idol music. I love my idol groups and everything. But Castle Point should start doing a, fr- a Saturday night idol show and then just have regular skits on Sunday. I think it's time for that. Now, the other thing that kind of got under my skin, but I kind of understand. Now, you know, with masquerades, they always have best novice, best journeyman, best craftsmanship, and best in show whether it's for hall cosplay for the technical aspect or or masquerade when you're on stage doing the performance. What they did for both was it was best masters slash best in show. In a way, I can see that because there was limited, there weren't that many skits. But at the same time, mean to tell me there's somebody who entered in masquerade who entered in craftsmanship judging isn't doing a performance on stage I do understand some conventions will have a best of weekend which is the best of show for craftsmanship judging and then you have best in show for performance and then some conventions will do will still have those two separate ones and then just best in show overall for for a group who did craftsmanship judging and performance case in point the uh jojo skit from zenkai so let, let's get into the hotel basically the staff was was basically rude they removed the, they removed the knobs off the doors of the emergency exits and they had what? yep and they had a fee now they were charging a $30 fee for every hour you were late checking out good god i know but i will say the wi-fi was so you won't be going back to that uh hotel again will you probably not probably will be staying at at um at hyatt place instead now, I will say this about Castle Point. It's not the best con in the world, and it's not the worst con in the world. But this is a convention where the friends will make it worthwhile. So if you got a bunch of friends, go to Castle go to Castle Point. The friends of will all make the cons. It. This was one of them. Yeah, because here's the thing. Every, everything is done around 9 o'clock on Saturday. That still gives you time to hang out with your friends in their room, go to the movies, go out to dinner or something like that. I mean, honestly, if Castle Point was a slightly, was hot, was more higher tier, I would have stayed, I would have booked the room till Sunday and gone home on Monday and just relaxed. Because I, you know, the mattresses were pretty good. And that's basically my... Castle Point review in under 15 minutes. Will I go back next year? Sure. Will I enjoy the friends? Absolutely. Everything else, we will see. And with two fucking seconds to spare, (laughs) I think this calls for a victory. 
Sorry about that. What all right? I'm still playing through uh, Final Fantasy VI. Is it the Pixel Remaster? Yep. I heard they actually amped up the experience and all of that to kind of speed you through the game. Well, you can you can go into the config menu and modify the uh, like how much experience or a uh, gill you get for defeating certain enemies, or even just turn uh, enemy encounters off. Okay. Which yeah. is going to make for some really crazy low-level runs when uh, people start doing those. Hmm. I would, I mean, not for nothing, I would play through those pixel remasters if I could do, like, 2x experience or 3x experience and, like... Turn oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can do 2x experience. And if I can turn... Experience hmm? and double money, I think. Yeah. And yeah. if I could turn off encounters in certain parts of the game where I can just go through the level... Because I'm like this. You can once I know once I get to a certain level, I'm like OP. I'm just turning off encounters and just going right to the boss. So you know, because that's what uh, Rob from OLR was basically saying. So again, I don't agree with the cost, but you know. But before I wrap up the review, I want to say hi and a special shout out to Fifteen Tabby Cat because we we met. I took a picture of her cosplay and she told me she she participates with the show and she was on and I believe she got on stage for the whole cosplay and those photos will be up soon I am still working on Zenkai Con photos so to 15 T Tabby Cat Katie RJ Julia everybody appreciate seeing y'all for a few minutes hanging out with you and taking pictures we'll have to do it again so now that we got that out of the way and I can put the timer away Let's get into our stories of the night. And I think we have time to knock these out. So I believe our first story is about Japanese illustrators fighting back against AI and AI images and so forth. And we've seen them. We are seeing people just throwing it to the AI and making these, and made these amazing photos. At first, it was all half-assed, but technology has gotten better. And remember... When you're doing like these AI apps and so forth, they're keeping a copy of these of your real photo and the AI version on their servers, which is helping to make these better images. So, I saw somebody share a completely AI generated beer commercial on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Good God, this thing is nightmare fuel. No, nightmare fuel is when people were showing screenshots of of. Futurama and Street Fighter as 80s dark fantasy films. Please stop. No, no, no. I got one. I was looking at it today because Kyle posted it. AI generated Aliens the Musical. Oh my god. It's horrible, but amazing at the same time. And Omnia Style says, oh god, it was terrifying. I saw that beer commercial. See? Someone knows I'm Someone doesn't think I'm crazy. And on a side note before we continue, y'all getting mad over a light fucking beer? Y'all getting mad no. over... No, no, I'm just saying, y'all getting mad over flavored water? A trans woman is promoting... It's just beer. It's not that serious. It and really it's not isn't. Even good beer. I know. But regardless of that, just remember... Everybody drinks beer and alcohol, all of that. Cis, trans, straight. Everybody drinks booze. Deal with it. Anyway, can we continue? Yes, you can. Yeah. So a group of illustrators and cartoonists in Japan are calling for legislation to protect their copyrighted work against inappropriate use of artificial intelligence. Mokume Momiji, an illustrator, and two other members of the group of about 30 artists made the appeal at a news conference on Thursday. They point out that the most types of image creating generative AI collect and copy images without permission from their copyright holders and use them as a machine training data. Uh, they also say there is a rampant problem of people using generative AI to alter images online without permission, 
and release the AI versions as their own work. The group representatives say there has not been sufficient debate in Japan about the need for legislation on AI development and copyright issues. They want the developers of image creating generative AI to obtain permission from the copyright holders before using their work to train their programs. The group also says that images made by generative AI should be clearly labeled as such and their creators should be required to pay fees to copyright holders of the originals. Mokume says a large number of copies of his works have been released online and it is unforgivable. He said his group wants the Japanese government to protect creative art, uh, creative activities and artist rights. And he's completely right. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I back this 110%. I mean, as much as we joke about, you know, what AI has created, it's... I, I've seen so many online that you can tell that it's just it's stealing from you know the the it's it's learned enough from manga clips online and you know this also goes back to the uh scanlations of manga mm -hmm. that these you know it's it's a scanlation so somebody just takes that entire site and uploads it into one of these ai files to learn those styles and bam you know, it starts creating crap from licensed material. It's uh, it's not good at all. Look, I'm okay with AI in, like, guiding you. Like, if the AI is... If you're using AI to train your art and you're drawing it a certain particular way and, let's say, you submit it to, to, the, AI, to the AI system and, let's say, it spits back at you, like, five different things like suggestions on maybe do it this way or that way that i'm okay with using ai to learn and to hone your skills like if i use ai on lightroom to properly adjust the lighting let's say it does five of my pictures automatically i'm gonna go in and check each one and make any adjustments to see if i like it or not i mean Granted, Lightroom has an auto tone, auto tone option. Sometimes it hits the nail right on the head, and sometimes it does not. And sometimes it coughs up things with really hideously deformed hands and feet. Oh, that's Lightroom, not Photoshop. But I, I was I talking about it. like these AI art makers. And the same, the same thing with with writers. I mean, like if AI is helping you write your story, like giving you suggested words or this or that like i use i start using grammarly you know when i'm like writing social media posts or email or updating my tickets it'll give me the suggestion i'll go through each one and be like i like it this way i like it that way we use ai at work when submitting tickets but the ai doesn't automatically respond to the user with an automated response where it does sound human sounding. I just don't use it because I just prefer to be like, I'm going to explain. I'll do it my way. You know, simple as that. Using AI to help guide you is okay. Using AI outright and being lazy about it, no, absolutely not. And again, like it, like seeing like the deformed hands and or feet just completely mm -hmm. takes you out of it. At least for me, it does. I'm like, oh wow, this actually looks pretty good, and these hands are hideous. No, no, I get that. Like, I'll say this one last part, then we'll get on to the next story. A while back, someone shared to one of the groups I'm in, uh, "What if Hogwarts as an HBCU?" For those of you who don't know, HBCU means historical black college or university. Basically, all the main characters are black doing step shows and stuff. And I'm looking at this, and I'm just like, first things first, these images are a little bit too dark, so I could tell it's AI. And secondly, there were characters with like eight, nine fingers on one hand, and I'm just like... Ugh. 
Seriously, some of y'all need to chill with that AI shit. All right. Next, our next story now. Um, about voice about voice actor Hiroya Ishimaru. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's announcing his retirement. Uh, Tal agency Axe On announced that one of the towns, Hiroya Ishimaru, will retire by the end of March next year. He's best known to most fans as Koji Kabuto from Mazinger G and Mazinger Z and Ultraman Taro. He is also the official Japanese voice actor for Jackie Chan and played in more than 90 works, including the Kung Fu Panda franchise, Police Story franchise, and the Rush Hour movies. Mm. This also... This also applies to characters who are inspired by the actor, like Wei Lu Long from Tekken and Sharky Chan from Juken Sentai Geki Ranger. Oh, that was a great! That was a great Super Sentai series. Some of his other roles are Hot Hot Rod or Rodimus Prime from uh, Transformers: The Headmasters, Kozuki Odin in One Piece, Edge Geraldine from Final Fantasy IV. And Dracula in Castlevania Rondo of Blood. So, uh, you know, good for him for hitting retirement. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm happy for him. He's a uh, he, Oh, he's eighty-two. Damn. Yep. He's going to retire next year. I think that's really cool. Mm-hmm. All right, I have to. Uh, Dip out for the night, guys. All right, all right. Take care, man. I will definitely see you on the show next week. Definitely. Have see you night. later. Later. And now we switch over to two play mode. So easiest, easiest pot. All right, Marco. We all know the next one is yours. Yeah, I. <laughs> when you showed this to me, I I was just um. Yeah, so Toy in uh Toy Animation announced that its long-running Precure franchise, uh, their first stage play entitled Dancing Star Precure the Stage, will open in Tokyo and Osaka in the fall of 2023. The franchise has offered char- has offered character musical shows featuring Kigurumi actors since its launch in 2004. But this is the first stage play performed by non-Kigu actors. The main characters of the stage play are high school boys who transform into Precure. Uh, The ongoing latest 20th TV anime series, Soaring Sky Precure, has the franchise's first regular male Precure character, Pure Wing. So this might be another inevitable flow in history. The press release writes, the original story depicts their daily life devoted to dancing and their mission as Precure. The stage will deliver the exciting world of new Precure with direction that is unique for a stage play, powerful dance, and action that will unfold before the audience's eyes. Yo Hosaka, the leader of the theater unit, Kusu Kumi Kiyoku, and who has worked on numerous 2.5 dimensional stage plays, such as Ace Attorney and uh, Lycris Royale, a recoil. That was a really good anime. You need to watch that. Yeah, I keep being told that. Um, So they're serving as director on his own script. In addition, Takashi Washiro, one of the producers of the early Precure series, will join a supervisor. And Toshi Kawamura, the character designer of Yes Precure 5, Smile Precure, and Hugo, uh, Hukuto Precure, drew the key visual illustrations. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of cool. I, I, it's weird in the way that the first legit stage play is going to be a boy group. Mm-hmm. But again, with the popularity of boy groups i guess it's not far-fetched but i'm surprised that their first you know musical kind of dancing one isn't i guess i i guess idle girls and they went with idle boys yeah because idle boys is start that's starting to get a little pop more popular now because i think there's i think there's like 
I think it's Idolish 7. That's an idol boy anime, and there's a few others. I know I started watching one, but I got sidetracked. Yeah, I I like the outfits for them. Um, I I I guess I'm they they're very. I mean, some of the outfits are very very casual looking, which is kind of weird to me. But it's not the first concept of magical boys, so I I'm not surprised. But I kind of wish they looked a little bit more uniform. What do you mean? Because what do you mean uniform? Well, right now all five of them look like they're from different series. Oh, okay, I got you. There okay. really isn't a uniform a uniformity of costuming. I'll say. Gotcha. So yeah, I mean, I I do wish that there was a little bit more cohesiveness, but it's not it's not bad. Yeah, the they, costumes look pretty cool. They kind of remind me of the the cast of Free Iwatobi Swim Club. Yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Horace Recoil. Yeah, it, it, it's like John Wick Light. It's it's really good. <laughs> And there's Oshino Ko. Oh my god. Did you see Perfect Blue? Yes. Then you're going to like Oshino Ko. It's like... I guess it's twisted. (laughs) Say what? I said I guess it's twisted. Understatement of the year. (laughs) I'll have to tell you more offline not to spoil, but it's like... The mangaka watched Perfect Blue and just took a deep breath and said, hold my beer. <laughs> so now we get into our last story of the night about Bushiro. And they, and they have a lot of IPs. Now, they're going to create a, they're going to create a new co- establish a new company for their latest IP. And they announced this uh, last week, that they're splitting its consolidated subsidiary Bushiro Creative to establish a new company called Bushiroad Works, and this will happen on July third. Bushiroad Works will be in charge of publishing magazines and books, planning and operating comic websites, and creating new IPs. So this is sort of like the technical aspect of Bushiro. They will also transfer Bushiro Well Be. It's subsidiary that it owns fitness as fitness clubs. Kashi Oba, president of Bushiro Wellbe, will purchase the subsidiary for an undisclosed price. Takaki Kidane founded Bushiro back in 2007. The company owns a number of cross media franchises, some which originate from its card games, such as Card Fight Vanguard and Future Card Buddy Fight series, have also inspired long running television anime series and his Luck and Logic card game inspired two television anime series. They also own the Waze Schwartz anime crossover card game, and they also own a Tante Opera Milky Homes franchise, as well as the Bang Dream franchise as well, when we all have seen that. And they are also the people behind Love Live, which basically put the entire idol anime on its genre on its ear. And they also own uh, D4DJ. And for those of you who like a little bit of everything, there's also Review Starlight that they also have. And for those of you who may not know, they also own New Japan Pro Wrestling. I believe there is a commercial of Kenny Omega when he was with New Japan uh, promoting uh, one of one of the Love Live mobile games. Now, back in 2015, Bushiro did establish Bushiro Creative to plan, develop, and sell merchandise. And the uh, founder, Takaki Kidane, is stepping down as Bang Dreams franchise executive producer. Seems interesting. It seems like they're a big company, but small at the same time. So, I kind of I like that. And now that we got that out the way, 
it's time for part of the show that y'all enjoy more than anything else. So you gotta stick around for. Uh, meanwhile, in Japan, make sure the volume is set. So let's see what we got here. I'll take the second one. Uh. All right, I'm going to take the last one. All right. So we'll save this one for next week. Um, when we talked about uh, on our pre-up, our pre-show, AKB48, the team system, we'll save that for next week's show. We'll probably, probably give it to uh, Barry. That's her thing. So now what we're going to talk about is how Yakuza members were arrested for going to a baseball game. I wish I was making that up. You might have noticed a fair bit of coverage recently regarding the ever-shrinking liberties of Japan's Yakuza and we've, that we've talked about. No phones, no supermarket loyalty points, no motor cars, not a single luxury. Like Robinson Caruso, it's primitive as can be. And if you know the reference, you might be due to compensation. But on, <laughs> but on April 8th, a pair of gangsters learned the hard way that they can't even enjoy a great Japanese pastime of professional baseball at the stadium. Hyogo Prefecture Police arrested 78-year-old Fujio Sakai and 52-year-old Hideki Deguchi on suspicion of unlawful entry when they went into the famous Koshien Stadium to watch the home team Hanshin Tigers take on the Yakut Swallows. Charges of this nature often stem back to the organized crime exclusion ordinances that were introduced nationwide around 2011. But however, in this case, Nippon professional ba baseball was way ahead of the curve and already blackballed Yakuza members back in 2003. Ah. Moreover, the Hanshin Tigers were at the center of this move due to a series of incidents linked to the unofficial cheerleading corps known as the Chutoro Rengokai. This was a group of some 500 Tigers fans who occupied seats together and cheered extra loudly for the team. That's pretty cool. And usually this is just harmless, high-spirited, fun fans just having a good time. But behind the scenes of this, Yakuza members were allegedly running various rackets to profit from that. One way was, to, was by scalping uh, Chutoro Rengokai seats by having homeless people line up for tickets and then selling them to diehard fans for about three times the price. Wow. There was an incident where connected members of uh, Chutoro Rengokai threatened to kill a manager at Koshien Stadium because after a game where the Hanshin Tigers narrowly defeated the, Yom the Yomiuri Giants, they were going to throw the Tigers manager, Tatsuno Yihara, into the air in celebration before Chutoro Rengokai could sing the team song, Roko Oroshi. Wow. As in regards to the team song, there was an incident where that group, the Chutoro Rengokai, claimed ownership of the song, Roko Oroshi, and even filed the copyright with the Jazz Rack, which is basically the Japanese ASCAP music rights and all of that. It wasn't until some 20 million yen and CD and ringtone sales, which is about $150,000, that were made that realized that the Chutoro Rengokai had no right in royalties because the original songwriter was unknown. Needless to say, around this time, the Tigers... And the professional baseball felt as a whole was just to put a blanket ban on all organized crime at their stadiums. Wow. But that was a while ago, and many people have forgotten about that. Even with, when Sakai and Deguchi joined the audience earlier this month, they didn't notice the sign at the stadium entrance stating that members of organized crime were not permitted to enter. But even if they had... With thousands of spectators at a single game, it'd be pretty easy for Yakuza members to slip by unnoticed, and many probably have in the past. But on that fateful day, it just so happened that the car that took the pair to the game was illegally parked outside the stadium. While the police questioned the driver, they grew suspicious that his passengers may have been connected. 
So they staked out the car until the game was over and identified Sakai and Deguchi as they walked back to it. Arrests were made the following day. Both men admitted to the charges, and Deguchi even expressed his surprise, reportedly telling police, I didn't know Yakuza can't go to baseball games. He certainly isn't alone, either, and it's food for thought that any youngster looking to enter a life of organized crime. Sure, there's glitz and glamour that comes along with stealing sea cucumbers in the middle of the night, but think of everything you'd have to give up. And as Bonds 6 says, well, now what's a little racketeery every now and then? <laughs> and to refer back to um, about Perfect Blue and so forth, Sia Tabiri says, Oceano Cole sounds like one of the short stories from the Perfect Blue collections. Well, that's all <laughs> I got to say about that. And Omnia Style says, Love Life has a stage play coming soon, so they'd have to compete with that if it was girls. Yeah, and we talked about that. And I am and I hope I'm somebody releases a video of it. I'd like to watch it and see it, you know? All right, Mako, it's on you. Yeah, so, um... Up Noodle. Uh is made easier. Yep. <laughs> so uh, it seems like an absurdly lazy ambition, but convenience is the whole point of instant ramen. The easier, the better, we say. And thankfully, that's a philosophy that cup noodle maker Nissan shares with us, as demonstrated by the company's latest invention. At first glance, that might look like an ordinary measuring cup. But the cup noodle logo and a few other aesthetic touches from its iconic packaging. But look closer and you'll see that the units of liquid measurement aren't in metric or imperial, but cup noodles. The lowest line indicating the smallest volume is the amount of hot water you need to add to a cup noodle mini. The middle line corresponds to the amount required for a standard size cup noodle. And at the top is the amount for a cup noodle big for those times when you're fiercely famished. Mm. <laughs> cup noodle cups do have a line on the inside near the rim that shows how much hot water you're supposed to fill them with. So if you have a hot water dispenser in your kitchen that you always remember to keep filled, the benefit of, of a cup noodle specific measuring cup might not be so quickly apparent. If you don't have a dispenser, though, Neeson's invention takes the guesswork out of deciding how much water to boil so that you won't boil too little, leaving your noodles undercooked, or too much, wasting time boiling extra water you're not going to use, only to dump it down the drain. The tweet quickly racked up nearly 140,000 likes as of uh, the writing of the article. Along with comments such as, I want this so bad. Uh, seriously want one of my own. This is a wonderful invention. Please start selling these. So Neeson hasn't mentioned anything about offering the cup noodle measuring cup for sale. Uh, but if they do decide to start selling them, uh, it wouldn't be one of their craziest ideas. Hey, uh, Mako-chan. Not gonna lie. I want one. I want one too. <gasps> All right, hold on. I, I'm going to grab something out of my mini kitchen here. And I, you got, let, let, hold on. Ah. It's a good thing that my kitchen is literally right there. So. Whenever I go to Sunrise Mart, I always buy, you know, import ramen. And what's great on the back, there are English instructions. It's like as if they know. Now, here's the thing. When you buy the American ones, they always tell you one cup or two cup. Not the, not the Japanese uh, ramen noodle packets. They always tell you it's got to be like, in this case... 550 milliliters, which is about two cups. So, I went out 
and bought this measuring cup, okay? You can't see it too well because of the lighting, but on this side is like the normal weights and measures that we use here in the States. And on the, and I guess this side is metric, whatever. This is the milliliters, all right? So I went out and got this specific measuring cup just for my ramen, just so I can pour the exact amount of water for ramen, okay? But a cup like that, a measuring cup like that, that would be perfect. I mean, if it's microwavable, then hell yeah. And yeah, I don't know if it would be microwavable, but I would assume so. But that's okay. I have no problems boiling water on my on, on the stove and pouring it in there. And as Bonds 6 says, I have a Sunrise Mart two blocks away from my job. I was just down at the Sunrise Mart like two weeks ago heading over to um Micro Center. So I'll be making another trip down there, I think Thursday. If you're going down, let me know what Kit Kats they have. I might shoot you money for Kit Kats. Are there any specific ones you're looking for? Um, odd flavors. Okay. And speaking of, one more thing. When I was at um Castle Point going through the dealer's room, I actually remembered to open up my Otaku Mode wish list and just make like a PDF of everything so I know exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Unfortunately, it the way the pay, the way it was, it didn't come out exactly. So I had a general idea. So enough about that. I think it's time we go ahead and wrap up the show. Yes. Yes, indeed. Because a certain somebody here I know is tired. I was tired before we even started. You're always tired. I woke up tired. I thought you woke up mad at the world. Um, only on days ending with Y. There. So, anywho, if you like the show, tell a friend. They in turn will tell another friend and so forth. We're independent bloggers, independent podcasters. We do this for the fun of it. So, what we tell you what we like and don't like, we actually mean that. So, if you have any questions about the show, please drop us a line at podcast at animejamsession.com again that is podcast at animejamsession.com and while you're at check out our website at animejamsession.com where you'll find our weekly podcast anime reviews editorials cosplay tips and tricks cosplay interviews and so much more at animejamsession.com and don't forget to check out our podcast with any podcasting apps that you might have. You can find us on Anchor FM, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts. And what's cool is these apps allow you to leave reviews. So if you can drop us a, a review, we greatly would appreciate that. Now that we've got that out the way, let me minimize that. Let me grab this over here. Perfect. And please don't forget to follow us on our social media pages. We're available on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. Follow us on those so you know when we're going live, when we have articles going up, when episodes are going up, when our convention photos are up, and videos, and so forth. And now, we're going to go around... The, nope, before we go around the room, we're going to tell you about the tip jar. If you're watching live, there's a link to our Ko-Fi and stream elements if you want to just throw cash at us. We'd appreciate that. If you're still alive, you can throw bits at us. That would be great. You can sub to the channel. Give a gift sub. All of that. We really appreciate that. And then some. Support the commercials that may pop up here and there. We'd love that too. So now we're going to go around the room. Last words. Mako. Um, yeah, I need to figure out what is going on for this weekend. Just so I know if I'm buying tacos early on friday Ooh, yes you are tacos uh, <laughs> my last words i want ramen i'm going to grab an instant cup noodle and eat that before i go to bed well that is it end of list we'll be back next week ari will be here barry will be here it'll be fun will you be here we hope that you do that's it 
end of list. We're getting up on out of here. So I'm Ranma. And I'm Mako-chan. Great fight. Great fight. Oh, great night. Great fight. See you next week. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Say goodnight, Mako-chan. Good night, Mako-chan. Perfect and awesome. Before I hold up. Why is it still playing? That's odd. I just paused the damn track. <laughs> How would the hell? How the hell is it still playing when I paused the damn track? I just wanted to. It's the ghost in the machine. I see what you did there. You have no shame. None at all. You know this, though. Yes. I wanted to answer Bonzo 6's uh, comment. If he was, he was wondering if, if I had attended Castle Point and he saw a lot of photos. Yeah, I did. Uh, early in the episode, I did a 15 minute review, so definitely check that out. So let's kick it up to here. All right. So now we're going to get out of here. See you all next week.